I'm live right now. Awesome. Right on. All right. We are live on Facebook, or we think we're live on Facebook. You just never know with Facebook. <laughs> they like to keep you in suspense. Uh, apparently, it's this uh, relationship between Zoom and Facebook. You just never know if you're actually live. Uh, but we, we believe that we are now. So that said, super stoked to be on today. We've got a great Club Wealth TV for you guys. Uh, I'm, of course, uh, joined by my co-hosts. Uh, Miss Sheree, I should say Mrs. Sheree, the lioness, super coach of the world, 500 units, closes <laughs> everything and crushes it. Benjamin, uh, if that's uh, sort of accurate, I think it's actually probably <laughs> understating it a little, but uh, there's Sheree Benjamin, freaking love her. Then we've, of course, got the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Brian Curtis, who does <laughs> not screw around. This is a guy that has uh, absolutely taken over the hustle and bustle metropolis of uh, Bentonville, Arkansas. And uh, I see we've got Sharon Yuri is watching, Kathy, Christine Andreessen, Madison, Kathy, Sharon, Anna, Oscar, Greg. We got all these great people watching, Rick Bell. And we have with us today our guest, Mr. Man of the Century. I don't know how to even put that. I mean, it's just like the man <laughs> of the universe, Mr. Mike Bjorkman, and uh, today we are talking with Mike about signs of a shifting market. You know, and and this is going to be a really intense conversation. I have a feeling that, and I'm, I'm really looking for it. I want to hear Brian and Sheree being wicked vocal on this one because I have a feeling they're going to share some stuff with us and they're going to have some opinions that maybe even a little different than Mike's opinion. Uh, and so I'm excited about what I think is going to be a very spirited conversation today. So without any further ado, Mr. Mike Bjorkman, welcome to Club Hi, guys. Club. It's been a while since I've been on. I'm freaking excited as all heck. Uh, <laughs> boy, they've got my filter working this morning. Everything, man. It's Mike, all cool. I do is win, Bjorkman. That's all I do was oh. win, win, win. I'm at... Yeah, no, I love oh that song. God. Everybody knows that's my song. <laughs> Look at Brian. Actually, another, <laughs> another recruiter in my area copied it the other day. I was like, are you crazy? Anyways, so it's been a crazy day. I'm going to apologize up front. I have to get off at 8.40. My TV show starts taping at 9, and I double booked myself today. Um, dealing with Drew Barrymore in my backyard this morning and 500 studio people. It's been crazy. But I want to talk to you guys about this. And I want to, I want to do a full disclosure up front before we talk about this. This is things that I'm seeing in today's market. That's all it is. I'm not saying the market's crashing. I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying, hey, if you're going to know, this is what you're going to look for. Now, for those of you that don't know me, I went through the market shift in Southern California twice. I got in the business in 1990, or yeah, I can't even say that out loud. It seems so long ago. 1999, 1991, when the market started shifting and we went through an earthquake in 1994 and it did not recover until about 96, 97. So that's the first turnaround I went through. And then of course, in 2005, it started slowing down and uh, 2006 was very clear and evident. And, uh, and this is where I wanted to get in with you guys because many of you have not seen a market turn or even two market turns. So as we have this discussion on Facebook a lot and in our mastermind groups, people are like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Our inventory is so low, da 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 da, da. But I wanna be very clear with you guys. Southern California is the dog and we wag you. You're our tail, right? That's just the way it works. No matter what you say in history, <laughs> we control your market. So when I say or see something's happening, it's not, it's nothing that matters to you today, but it will tomorrow. So you guys need to be very close, paying close attention to what the professionals around the country are saying. If you've been in the market, you know, and you think you're all hot since 2011 when it started picking up and you're doing 100 deals a year, cool, that's awesome. Trust me, you better listen because I know a lot of people like that that almost lost their booties big time in the recession. So say what you want. I'm just giving you my opinion, some of the indicators I'm seeing. Uh, Michael, do you have anything to say before we get rolling on that? Yeah, I do. You know, I'm first and foremost, I got to tell you guys, I'm excited about what's happening. You know why? Because this is where the freaking money is made, right? Everybody else like wonders after it happens, well, what just happened? And why did I not get on the front end of this? Because you weren't freaking paying attention. That's why. And yeah. when you pay attention and you understand that chaos creates opportunity, you got to understand that right now, and we're about to see more opportunity in this industry than we've seen since 2007 to 2011. Mike and I both experienced this and a lot of people did where, where our businesses grew from, you know, good solid businesses to ridiculous businesses when the market sucked the most, when everybody else was like, oh my gosh, what do I do? I got to get out of the business. And here's what's going to happen as the market shifts, 
team members. So, so solo agents are going to start latching onto teams. They're going to start realizing that, oh my gosh, these teams have all the opportunity. I can't afford leads. I can't afford support. I can't afford whatever. And the market's changing. I either have to get out of the business or get on a team. And what's happening for the team leaders is the team leaders, the good ones, are still us back up. The, a lot of team leaders are going to say, oh my gosh, I'm freaking out. My money's getting tighter. What do I do? I'm going to start cutting back. So what do they do? They stop with, they start cutting back on coaching and lead generation. The two things they need the most when this happens are the first two things they cut. And you know what I did in 2007 when everybody else was cutting back? The very first thing I did was I looked for, number one, I had my coach. Number two, uh, I looked for all of the lead sources that I knew worked that they were now canceling. And I picked up every single one of those territories and my business shot through the roof. Right. All so right. There you go, Mike. Let's get started down this list real quick because I want to yap off what I'm seeing. And then when I duck off, you guys can talk about some of that really cool stuff. And one thing I promise you guys at Club Wealth, nobody's going to leave you hanging. You're going to have every opportunity to take advantage of every opportunity there is. Um, we won't leave you hanging. We'll teach you default. We'll teach you short sales. We'll coach you all the way through that. So don't you worry about a thing. So the number one thing that really, really surprised me, Michael, when I started looking into this is I saw open houses one day everywhere. Now, with our inventory as low as it was, people were begging for an open house. You might see two or three signs here and there. And then one day there was 20 on one corner. I went, wow, that kind of looks like a different market that I haven't seen in a while. So that preempted me to go out and look at the inventory a little bit. And I noticed, and I did some statistics, our inventory had doubled in the last 30 to 90 days. And that's a big number, right? We were going from 300, 350 up to 700 in our area of only 250,000 people. So that was pretty eye-opening. And, um, and the other thing that was trippy is it happened like overnight. And people, the, the biggest thing I remember from the recession is people said, Mike, it happened overnight. And I said, you know what? You're right. I remember that. And what I noticed this time is, you know, we have about 50 signs in the ground at all times, right? So agents call me all day, every day. And here's what they're calling and say, hey, Mike, it's so-and-so. I just wanted to ask you how much wiggle room is in that price? How much negotiating is there? Will they pay closing costs? And a week before the the, the question was, how many offers do you have? Can, I, can you give me some sort of hint so I can at least get in the negotiating game with you? With, in, in a matter of overnight, like I said, a week, boom, the complete call shift. And that day, the offer started coming in three to five to 10% lower. And I was like, oh my gosh. Now, one thing I said before, if you don't do a lot of business, if you're not doing hundreds of deals a year, you don't get to experience this as fast as we do, right? So I get to see this every single day. I'm like, okay, if I got 20 calls in one day of people saying how much negotiation room is there, that's a big deal. So I had to pay attention. Um, so, and then all in the same week, and this is about three weeks ago, just so you know, three to four weeks ago. And then what I noticed is uh, many of you know, I own a huge property management company called California Leasing. We have anywhere from six to 100, 700 properties at any given time. Our biggest challenge over the last couple of years was people trying to take advantage of their equity and sell those properties. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, Oh man, we're losing 10 this month, five this month, three this month, 10 this month. And now it started happening the same week. People said, Hey, we're going to give them back to you, back to your portfolio because we weren't able to sell them for what we want. And then I heard the thing that I hadn't heard since 2005. Well, I'm not going to give it away. I just went, oh, geez. Okay. And, and I've been just like slap, slap, slap. And I was like, holy moly, it just couldn't get any worse in the same week. Um, so then, and I'm going down a little list of notes that I have here. And I think it's available for you guys for a download. So it then is, I go. In fact, I'll post that link in your chat box, you guys, uh, if you want to see the download. It's just a little 30 minute class I did for my agents and my, and my, um, you know, our masterminds that we're part of. So it's not a big deal. And, and then I have all these listings, right? And, and I'm, when I say 40, 40, 50 signs in the ground, I'm not kidding. So these sellers are getting frustrated. And there was some of our listings that weren't getting a showing for seven to 10 days. Now, when we're used to seven to 10 offers, I'm not getting a showing for seven to 10 days. And I'm crying, just going, oh my God, I'm going to have to talk to these people all the time again. And, <laughs> and here's what they started saying to me uh, when I'm listing their houses. They're saying, how long are you going to make me sign a listing agreement for? And I'm like, <laughs> I have not heard that and since 2011, right? I was like, you got to be kidding me. Where? So these sellers, what they do is they all get emails from some school and they all go to the school and they all get the, the market objections or their whatever their challenges might be. And I'm like, how could you all ask that in the same week? It's just the weirdest thing in the world. But then what even got even crazier, they started saying, I'd like to see what you're going to do to sell my home. 
So you know me, I concentrate on the most high-tech, expensive marketing in the world, Sync, Ylopo, you know, our Facebook ads. We do so much stuff with other real estate agents. And now I feel like a rock star, right? Because they're actually looking at my blah, look what I have for you. Show me another agent that can do this, right? And they're just like, wow, that's really cool. And and it's kind of fun for me because I'm like, look, this is why you're going to pay us a million percent to sell your home, right? So it's like, that was a trip too, because how in the last couple of years, they're like, I don't care. As a matter of fact, I don't even want to sign, just throw in the MLS. And you don't, we don't care if you've been in the business a day, a month, a year, or five years. And it's, 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 it's really crazy. So and I know I'm babbling a lot. So somebody jump in and say, shut up if you need me to stop. But the craziest thing, the best thing I've seen lately on these listing appointments, even when I'm talking to potential sellers, they call me and they say, well, we could list with purple bricks or Rex or all these, but we really don't know if that's the right idea right now. We really want to talk to a seasoned professional and compare the differences. And I'm like, there is a God. Yes. I'm like, this is the best thing in the world, right? I mean, I've been writing scripts and dialogues for this for years and years and years. So I'm like stoked. I'm like, okay, watch this. You ready? Here's one. Here's two. Here's three. So it's my market and I'm loving this, right? Even though it's a little scary and it takes a little bit of adjustment, uh, but that's okay. And then, then the ultimate mind blower is that when we send the listings to the sellers after we've listed the property, they're actually looking at the comparables, asking me questions. Do you think this one's a better deal? Should we lower our price? I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like, I'm living in the twilight zone. So, so it's so interesting to talk about because we haven't seen this in so long and many agents haven't ever seen this. So it's pretty fascinating to watch. And I realize there's a lot of somewhat stable markets across the country, but we just haven't seen that in so long. And knowing that California drives the rest of the country, I'm like, we better start sharing this. Um, so then the MLS, there's more price reductions and pendings. That's an interesting thing. I was at a listing appointment. I said, look, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, this is how it works. And I looked and went, holy moly, there's 20 actives, two pendings. I'm like, Tink! it completely flipped while I was on vacation. I was like, what the heck happened here? So that was cool. Um, and then the, another, another interesting phenomenon, right? With 300 agents I've been training for years and years, all of a sudden the agents came to me and said, I'm dying here. You have to teach me price reduction scripts. You have to teach me how to deal with this market. I don't know what to do. I haven't had a showing in a week and my sellers are freaking out. Now with 300 agents, the chances of getting a phone call or two are really good, right? So I'm getting these two, three a day. So I'm seeing a trend that's undeniable, right? So I have I have 100% proof that it's not just me and the world's boycotting my listings, right? So I'm like, okay, cool. So, so we have to go back and train the agents more and more and more and more. And since we started Club Wealth, but five years ago, something like that, it's it's never been more important to have agents watch these things, to learn these things. I mean, it, let's be honest, coaching is important, right? Through an up market, but now it's going to be more important than ever. So I just wanted to piggyback on what you said in the beginning, man, make sure you have your mentors and your coach and your brokers on point right now. It matters more than anything else. Um, so that was a pretty big thing. And then of course, we just start looking at statistics, price reductions. We have more price reductions in the last 30 days than we did in the last six months. That's a big number, right? Um, inventory yeah. doubled. Inventory Here in doubled. Atlanta, it, it matches. That's yeah. the crazy thing. And in, in, in Atlanta, it actually matches. So yesterday, just yesterday, we had a 130 new listings hit the market and we had 126 price decreases. Wow. That's just yesterday. That's real numbers, folks. I mean, like I said, if you're not doing a lot of business, you don't see it. So it's more important now than ever to match or to use that button in your MLS that runs statistics or learn how to do them. Because if you don't watch these numbers, it catches you like there's no tomorrow. You have to be able to be at a listing appointment, and say, Mr. And Mrs. Smith, I want to show you three important things that most agents won't tell you they're afraid. They don't know. They haven't, they, they haven't been around long enough to know, but here's the deal. Here's our price reductions versus price increases. You know, here's length of time on the market and here's the average negotiation 
price that's going on right now. And here's the amount of inventory we have, how many months inventory we have this year, this month compared to last year and last month. And those things are crucial when you're at a listing appointment because the last thing you want to do is take an overpriced listing and chase the market down. And I know we should be talking a little bit about buyers and I'd be more than happy to do some buyer training for this market too, because it gets really tough with them. But you know, I hope, hope most of you are into sellers and that's what I kind of like to focus on. Um, so, you know, the, the biggest thing we were talking about, Michael, is that price reduction script. And I'm using it all day, every day, training it all day, every day. And agents are literally in tears calling me, thanking me. Now, what do you think the number one script you've ever taught me was? <laughs> the follow-up script or the closing script? The, the, just yeah. making sure I'm not dropping the ball on my end, right? Yeah. So this is the most beautiful yeah. script that merges with that. Mr. and Mrs. Smith, one of the benefits of working with Team Bjorkman is we're going to keep you updated all the time. It might seem a little inundating, but we just want to make sure we're not dropping the ball on our side. Here's the deal. If we don't have three to five showings a week in this market, we are clearly overpriced. And if we do, if we're lucky enough to get three to five showings a week and no offers, we are clearly overpriced. Mr. and Mrs. Smith, we've been doing this a long time, and this is exactly the numbers we need. So if you have noticed three to five showings, no offers, it's a clear indicator that we need a price reduction. All it means to you is these agents are comparing your house to better deals, having them write offer on those houses because there are motivated buyers looking at your house. It's 105 degrees out right now. If they're out looking at houses, they're serious. Here's the deal. They're buying other homes and here's the proof. You know, So that script is all you need right now in the beginning of this market to actually get rolling and rolling and rolling before we start throwing lots of scripts and dialogues at you guys. You know, one of the things that you talked about, Mike, that I think is really important for a couple of things. First of all, understand when Mike says you don't want to take an overpriced listing or you don't want to have an overpriced listing, he's not saying that you as an agent shouldn't go out and get more listings regardless of the price. What he's saying is you're explaining this to the seller that you don't want to chase the market downward. That's very, very important. We're all about freaking a sign in the yard beats a sign in the car every day, right? Get every listing you can because that creates momentum that gives you more sign calls for your buyer's agents, which is not, it's the second best lead you get, you're ever going to get. Best lead, obviously, being a referral. So doing that, you know, taking every listing matters. The other thing, Mike, that you talked about is how when you, when you know your statistics on your listing appointments, people love numbers. You automatically sound like an expert, not because you say you're an expert, but because you quote numbers and it makes sense. So be you, but make sure you know a few statistics that you can quote on every listing appointment. And all of a sudden you will change from being a typical agent to being an expert. And so that checks that box. Now you can go through and check the other boxes. Do they know you? Do they like you? Do they trust you? Or, you know, have you, have you conveyed enough value to get them to work with you? And again, to Mike's point, make sure you're focused on listings. If you're a buyer's agent on a team, then of course, focus 100% on buyers. Uh, but if you're, if you're a solo agent or a team leader, you need to get really good at bringing in those listings. Yeah. Let me give you a couple more before I have to sign off things that are really working right now. So, so there's this wonderful thing called Google, right? And you could just Google Southern California market. What's happening in Southern California? And there's a media frenzy going on right now. And sometimes we miss it. Like CNBC the, on that little download I put, they, they literally use the the word Southern California market is crashing. That's a pretty big word to use, right? They used crashing with all the statistics. So if you compile a small PowerPoint or whatever you use at a listing presentation, that's going to be amazing to show them. They're going to be like, oh, it's undeniable. So as soon as, soon as NBC and CBS, all these people catch wind of a market, they love this stuff. So they'll create a frenzy and that'll help you at a listing appointment. The other thing that I wanted to tag on that script that I said, the three to five showings a week, when you are listing the property, it's okay to pre-use that script. Mr. and Mrs. Smith, I can appreciate the fact you have a beautiful pool in the view. I understand you think it's more valuable in a couple sales 90 days ago. Here's the deal. Sometimes in this position, I'd rather turn you down than let you down, but your house is so special that I really want to work with you. Here's the deal. Let's make a pack together. Is that cool? All right. If we don't get the three to five showings in the first week, 
we need to reduce it. If we do and no offers, we need to reduce it. Now I know seven days seems like a lot, but here's the beauty. Our pre-marketing campaign is so ridiculous that most professionals agree that about the second to third week is optimal for your, for your marketing time. But we do such a good job up front. Your first week is your optimal time. So it's just proof that after seven days, we're ready for a reduction. After 14, it's an absolute must. As a matter of fact, after 14 days, that's when I build it into our agreement that will automatically reduce it would you what do you say three maybe five probably five percent and write that down on your notes while you're dealing with them and then they'll they'll either agree or not agree but you're preemptively building this into your listing presentation because you know what mr mrs smith if that market in this market if your home hits 30 days oh it's inevitable you're going to reduce three to five percent and negotiate another ten percent trying to explain to them what's wrong what's not wrong with your house as the market could be going down even worse now we're coming up on the holidays. Traditionally, Southern California is not that seasonal in a good market. But in this fair market, or what we call maybe a stable or correcting market, it's more important than ever to prepare yourself properly for the winter months. When the flowers die, the prices go down. That's just the way it is. Fair enough? And they're just like, okay, okay. Um, some of the other things that we should do as agents right now is start creating videos or vlogs, right? And do some Facebook lives and some short videos and start retargeting to your, to your past clients and everything. Make sure they understand they know what's going on and that'll make them call you too. They'll be curious. They'll say, whoa, I haven't noticed a media frenzy. I haven't heard any realtors talking. And then when you talk to them, say, here's proof in the pudding and the realtors you're talking to, do they do numbers like me? There's a big difference. So let's do the right thing. Get ahead of this curve, nip it in the butt so you can do what you want, when you want, how you want. Wouldn't that be great? So you can move on like that so much simpler. And all these things put together in a presentation for them, especially a video and maybe a PDF that goes along with them, that's fine. And make sure you make a really big deal out of, I'm not preaching doom and gloom. I'm just sharing numbers. Don't shoot the messenger. People really respect that. They love that. Does that make sense? I, I think that if you, I think that if you present it in your listing appointment when you're going over your numbers, you are setting them up for in the event you do have to have the price reduction. We talk about it in, in our listing appointment. If you don't have this amount of showings in a certain time frame, I think it should be in everyone's. You know, I think you said you should think about doing this. I think that you should definitely do it because we don't know if that's what's going to happen or not. You know, it's, it's a box that we. <laughs> well, and here's the reality. The reality is we're not preaching doom and gloom. What we're preaching is for the, for you agents, we're not talking about for the sellers for a second, but to the agents, we're preaching, this is the best thing that's going to happen to your career in the next 10 years. You need to freaking embrace it and you need to get on this. And that's why you see club wealth. Now we've got, so we, we, we had a, a course, uh, 89 days to re, to uh, REO and short sale success. We are now revamping that course for the current market. We're going to be coming out with that course again for this exact reason, because you have to capitalize on this. You are going to miss the single biggest opportunity of your career if you don't embrace this and get rocking and rolling on it right now. You need to be getting with your coach right now, because another thing that we're doing is not just with the REO side, which is going, it's not, we're not saying that it's going to be like it was in 2007 to 2011, but there's some things you need to know. Did you know that there's over 2 million, just in Countrywide alone, there's over 2 million uh, um, reverse mortgages in default? 2 million reverse mortgages. Think about this. There's so much happening out there. There's so much we're going to call shadow inventory out there that we don't even realize is out there right now. You guys have to be prepared to capitalize on this, and it's a relationship game. So what we're doing is we're out building these relationships and rekindling relationships we've had in years past to help you guys be positioned properly to take advantage of it. Go ahead, Mike. I was going to speak to that because it's so important. I mean, you're the owner of Club Wealth and the coach and you want everybody to pay attention, but let me tell you guys something very seriously. When the market started going down in 2006, you know, where it was a big deal, I said, hey, I need to save my career. And I started at my property management business. By 2007, at the end of that year, I had 100 properties. I did the right thing and diversified. Best thing I've ever done in my life, saved my career. Career, but here's what I did. I said, okay, now that I made that badass, oh, sorry, I, I'm going to now get into REO like some of the people I'm watching. Let me tell you something. It had only begun and it was too freaking late. 
I missed out on one of the biggest opportunities. And until I met Michael and some other folks in 2010, I was not able to get into REO. So I, I want to salute you, Michael, and some of my other friends for bringing me into REO, handing me the business. But in between that time, I specialized in short sales. Now, that was another thing that's very crucial, you guys, to keep in mind. It may or may not happen. Who cares if it does or doesn't, but you want to be prepared for it. Because here's the reality. Once you're branded as a default specialist, a short sell agent, and you don't need to let the world know that you're some foreclosure guru if you don't want to, but at least with your messages and your retargeting and your mailers, those types of things you want to be. Because what was so nice by the time all the other agents said, oh, wow, I better learn how to do a short sell. Because here's what happens. The agents go, hey, the market's good. I don't want to do a short sell here. I'll refer it to Bjorkman. He's an idiot. He'll do short sells. Oh my gosh. Next thing you know, I got 30, 40 of them in escrow going, yeehaw, I'm rich finally. But the reality is, is by the time they wanted to learn, it was too late. They were just like, oh, my God, what do I do? And clients were listing with me and a couple other select group of agents out here because we were already branded as the short sell experts or default experts or the advocates for people that were in trouble. So. This is going to be different. If it does happen, you guys, there's going to be a whole new world. We have hedge funds this time, a lot, hundreds of thousands of homes owned by hedge funds. We have things like Zoom and auction.com. The auction world is going to be a lot different. You know, Google's dumped in millions and millions of dollars in auction.com, and they're just waiting for the opportunity. And then we're going to have the new data companies that we call discount brokerages. So REO is going to be a little different. Short sales are going to be a little different. But what I know this go around is short sales are going to be divvied out like REO. So you guys better get you guys better get really into that because at the turn of the market, I was getting referrals of three to five, probably a week of short sales, and then they dwindled away quick. But what the banks found out is that's the way to do it. Use their agents they already know, like, and trust, give them the business, and that would start happening. So look, guys, I don't want to talk about this for hours and hours. It's probably a little premature, but I want you to be prepared. We all love and care about you and want to make sure you're positioned right for anything the market does, whether it just makes a little blip correction, whether it stabilizes or whether it you know goes down or crashes. We want to make sure you're ready for all this stuff. So that's why I'm willing to come on here and talk about the things I'm seeing. So you guys can be really prepared. And then as we build courses for you, you're going to be like, yeah, that's what I need. That's where I see value. And that's what you're going to be able to specialize in. Like we have three or four short sales right now today. And 30 days ago, we had one. So it's different, you know, mm-hmm. and yeah, I, I do and see a lot of our default thing. agents. No. Yeah, I'm our seeing REO the same exact is. thing. We're getting them. And our short sales aren't coming from Mr. Buyer and Mr. Seller calling us. It's actually coming from the REO side saying, hey, I have someone who wants to do a short sale. So if you're you seeing know. that, I would love to see your numbers and your statistics because that's fascinating to me. Because I thought Atlanta would be a market that would go on well a year or two after California. So if you're already seeing that, yep, that's you're already seeing it. indicator, I'm going to add that to my indicator list. And we need to start running or somebody out there, please, I know you're you're super smart and analytical, run some t- statistics on some major metropolitan areas around uh, the country and let us know what you're seeing as far as statistics, because that's crazy. I mean, holy moly, if Atlanta's doing that and you're getting bank assigned short sales already, whew. all right, let's yeah, pay attention, you, folks. You know, and to Mike, to your point a moment ago, I want you guys to be thinking about this. It's not just REO. So now our new course that's coming out is not just about REO. In fact, we're using the word institutional clients in it for a reason right? It's all kinds of different entities that have a lot of love to share. It's, it's, it's banks, it's asset management companies, it's hedge funds. It's, it, it's the corporate clients locally. It's your, it's your big corporations that have an office in your, in your city that maybe don't already have a relationship with somebody. And even if they do have a relationship with somebody, you don't have to be right, get in right away as their relationship. You just need to be in number two spot and just keep ticking away at them, keep you know, hounding them a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, drop value on them, do something unique for them. And all of a sudden now they start to recognize you. They start to know you. They start to like you. They start to trust you. And they eventually start to use you. And that's your opportunity to really take that relationship to the next level. And for a lot of this, again, the training that we're going to be giving you guys on this really is to teach you how to go out and get these clients. And what you need to understand about the clients is it's not, it's not going to be a big spike and then it goes away you're going to see a slow ramp up and you're going to see a lot of this business happen over a long period of time. And the key that Mike mentioned this a little bit a minute ago, but I don't think you you touched quite enough on it. Mike, you mentioned about 
the need to have a balanced business. The problem that happened with a lot of these guys that got big into REO, they dropped the retail side. And the second they dropped their resale side, that was the beginning of the end for their business. What you have to do is you have to grow your REO and institutional, we're gonna say institutional side, but you gotta, you gotta grow your institutional clients while simultaneously growing your residential side, your retail side. And as you do both, they will feed off of one another. You will have a balanced business that will last you a very long time and will get you through this recession. Or excuse me, I'm not saying there's a recession coming. Let me be, be careful about that. But it would, <laughs> if there were a recession coming, it would get you through that. But you've got to maintain both. You can't have one or the yeah, other. I, I'm telling you, Michael, after the recession was over, you know, my biggest clientele when I owned agent mechanics, teaching agents how to do retail and property management, they legit dropped retail. And it was mind blowing. I'm like, you yeah. have thousands and thousands of leads. You have thousands and thousands of homes you sold that you guys can be totally giving market evaluations and telling these people getting referrals. Like, like I was so scared because I've seen all these different markets that I was like, I have to be diversified, short sales, property management, REO, retail, buyers. You know, it was funny because I remember the REO agents were hiring retail listing agents like they were <laughs> just nothing. Like, here, if I get a listing lead, will you go on it? I don't want to deal with that. I'm like, oh, my God, how could you say that? I was like blown away. <laughs> so See, there's a couple of questions here, Michael. Right. I don't know if you want to answer any of those because I have to I have to sign off in like five minutes. Um, but if you want to get to those or if you want to do those after I take off, that's cool, too. Actually, we'll do both. Um, but one of, one of the things I want you guys to remember is you're collecting lead sources, right? All we're talking about here is another lead source, okay? And you need to, instead of switching from one lead source to another, you need to add incrementally additional lead sources to your business. This is one more of those things you can add. So you add one, you master it, then you add the next one, you master that. This one's going to take longer to master, but it's also going to pay bigger dividends long term. So embrace it and get on it. All right, let's get to some of these questions. Uh, we'll go to... Uh, uh, Sharon Yuri asks, uh, what do you think about Zillow applying for a broker's license in Phoenix? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> My opinion on that is I know for a fact back in 2011 and 2012, they were actually beta testing every type of brokerage there was. They were beta testing discount brokerages. They were beta testing um, flat free brokerages, 80-20 splits. And they were, it was there very open with us about it. And then they really pissed a couple of us off. So we went public with it. And I don't think there's ever a time, no matter what they say, you can trust them. If the market shifts one penny they have to switch to that to make money for the investors and the advertisers and they will crush us and not think anything of it so i don't trust them i don't trust any of those companies i don't care what anybody says i've been around a long time in this business and i've seen the tricks and the little things that they do and the way they're setting themselves up i mean you don't buy all these companies and you don't do all this stuff if you're not somehow positioning yourself to be in the real estate game at some point if you want to be. But I tell you right now, they have a more accurate database than any MLS. I mean, Facebook and Amazon are probably the only other two databases more accurate than Zillow. So I'd watch our butts with those guys. I'm not happy about it. You know, and here's the, and I don't want to get into a bash Zillow session, but let's call it what it is, you guys. If they could make you employees of theirs, they would. <laughs> so they want you working. And they could, most of them, right? Look how many, look how many agents that have fallen on Redfin's nails. I mean, yeah. If you're willing to sell yourself out like that, why not Zillow if they pay a tad bit more? Well, and here's the reality. If you don't value yourself, nobody else will, <laughs> right? Exactly. So you have to value yourself. You have to believe that you bring value. And in order to believe you bring value, guess what? You probably should start bringing some value if you're not already. All right, so let's go to some more questions. Ania is asking, uh, how will you handle the objections with buyers telling us that they do not want to buy since the market is shifting and they want to wait for the deals? That's the, that's the best question I'm getting. And I really want to spend a lot, a lot of time on that. It's about a 20 minute answer, but here's the reality. What you need to know is the interest rates are for sure going up, right? In our average price range, the difference between um, a five and 6% interest rate on our average loan amount, which I want to say was somewhere around 460,000 is 1% interest rate different was $380 a month in payment. Excuse me. If the market went down, you have to calculate those payments and you guys should all have qualifier plus app on your phone. When we were little in the business, we had a real calculator, but lucky enough we're at, we can have them on our phones now as an app. It's 20 bucks. Don't worry about it. Spend the money. And it's just awesome. So you can sit there and go, okay, let's say the market went from 450 to 400 
and here it is today at 5% interest rate, but we already know interest rates are going up to six and compare them, right? Then you have to talk about pride of ownership. You have to talk about rent versus own scenarios, but it's not easy. I'll, I'll have to admit it's really hard, but you get good at it. Just like you would a for sale by owner or a expired. You just have to practice it. And pretty soon the buyers eat out of your hands and they send you so many referrals because they'll go to a party and they'll be in a big fight over why you shouldn't buy real estate right now. And once they've talked to you, they're like, oh, I totally get it loud and clear. And then they're going to say, I don't care what you guys say. Once you talk to Mike Bjork, when you understand why it's okay to buy right now. And the other thing is I just say, look, can you see yourself living in a house for three to five years? Yes. Well, then don't care. Can you see yourself renting a home out? Would you like to own rental property someday? Great. How about somebody else paying your mortgage down while the market goes like this and who cares what it does because your mortgage is covered? I mean, there's lots of scripts and dial dialogues like that. I have a YouTube channel, then maybe somebody can find the video and post. It's called Buyer Conversion. It's only a few months old and it talks an hour about this stuff. And not only that, it gets into how to, uh, uh, how to, dominate where you're dealing with the discount brokers that are willing to give big commission splits back. Um, sorry, the, uh, the, uh, the message thing was popping up and that's all right. That's all right. Let me jump in on this real quick. So we're going to get, okay, listen, it's eight 40. I got to go film my TV show. We're going to tape at nine. I got to get there. I love you guys. Thank you for the opportunity. I hope we all blast us all over the country and everybody gets to know what's going on. If you need help from me specifically, feel free to reach out. Um, I'm always here for you guys and I think that's about it. Brian, it was great chatting this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Benjamin, love you as always. Michael, thanks for the opportunity. And I'll see you guys uh, a little later. I love it, brother. Thank you for being on. All right, so we're going to keep going with this. You guys keep asking your questions. We're going to answer them right now. So Michelle Berquist asked a great question. What's the script for the seller that's been on the market for over a year? Absorption rate is 12 plus months. One home sold in the last six months. Seller has dropped over a hundred thousand dollars. I've explained this to them. They they want to know what else we can do besides lower the price anymore. I'm starting to feel helpless. I know the answer is price. Ah, oh my gosh. All right, Brian and Shree, thoughts? Brian, you're itching to talk. Let's go. <laughs> I'm, I'm not necessarily <laughs> itching to talk. So, you know, we fought this. And, and, you know, Sheree and Michael remember this too. We fought this in, in nine and in 10 and maybe even 11, you know, my memory is not perfect. So I can't remember the exact dates, but, but, but here's the reality is we can do one of two things. If the market did hit its peak and by the way, I'm not as doom and gloom as everybody else. So I appreciate everything that Mike was saying. And I don't think anything he was saying was incorrect with the exception of, we're still in a seller's market, even in Mike's market. Oh my gosh, it took seven days to get a house shown. Holy smokes, that's not a big deal. And, and I think people need to understand that, not because I want you to not prepare because Mike hit a bunch of great points. You don't want there to be a recession and six months later you go, oh, I guess I better get an REO. You wanna pay attention to it. But here's the thing that I see people all the time. I want REO, I want short sales, I want this. If it's not there, you're gonna to have to work on this other stuff for, for a while. So long as short is what I was saying, if we did hit a peak and we are declining, then if you wanna to wait to drop your price, you're chasing the market. We use that term all the time back in 08 and 09, is you're chasing the market. So I'm at $100,000 and my house isn't selling. And that, so I'm gonna to drop to 95,000. The only problem is the market also dropped to 91. And so I'm gonna wait another month. And now, you know, so, and that's an extreme. I'm not saying that we're dropping at one to two percent a month because that's ridiculous but my point is is that it's not getting better interest rates are going up the people's power to buy your house is going down i'm still don't think it's a bad thing i think it's a good thing i feel i feel like we're in an inflated market you know where you couldn't even put a house on the market i was laughing at all the agents and if you're one of them sorry i'm going to laugh at you i guess uh, on this deal when you brag about selling a house in a day, what my thought was is you didn't do a very good job holding off to make sure the seller got what they really wanted. There are exceptions to that, but you know, we've seen a lot of people brag, I sold a house in a day. Great, but you know, how many, you know, did you leave money on the table? So just things to think about out there. I think one of the things you've got to do is if Michelle, in your case, I get drastic with the seller. You gotta first of all, you gotta come back to motivation. You gotta ask them, why are you selling? What is the reason why you absolutely have to sell? And to Brian's point, if you want to not chase the market, then let's go take a, a whole nother look at this. Let's take a look at 
what is it really truly worth right now? And if it's worth what you want, then great. If it's not worth what you want, then we got to get drastic and we got to get at least five to 10% below what we think the market value is. Because guess what? Right now your house is what we call shop worn. And what that means is the people that are looking in your price range have started feeling like you, there's something wrong with your house because it's been on the market for so long. If you start making drastic changes that are not price related, you're going to have a hard time getting people back out here. So what do you need to do? You need to figure out what it's worth, put the price down well below what it's actually worth. Get people out there. Make sure that you price that thing on an even number. Do not do like $499, 950 or anything like that. If you're going to do that, do 500 so that now the people that are searching between 450 and 500 get it and the people that are searching from 500 to 550 get it. But you got to get serious about that price and you got to let them know what's coming. You got to share those statistics with them. All right, good stuff. Sheree, any thoughts on that before we go to the next one? Well, point? the only thing is that when it when you're sitting on the market for 12 months and you're constantly chasing the market, we always have to remember how Mr. and Mrs. Seller think. They think that it's your fault. I'm lowering my price. I've lowered my price when you've asked me before. So what are you really doing besides trying to take money out of my pocket each time? So you do still have to show them what you're doing. Are you doing open houses during the week or are you just, what are you doing that's not what every other agent is doing? Well, and that's, again, you're right. You've got to show them the value, right? You've got to show them what you're doing to get this thing sold. So be prepared for that. Show them, hey, here's all the times I've marketed on Facebook. Look how many views it got. You've got to yep. be really clear with that. Show and them the numbers and then you have to do it. So you got to show up for the open houses. You got to do it during the week. You have to, and then we can say, listen, this is what I've done. And this is still what the results are. So yes, we need to price it under the market. Instead of us chasing it, chasing it, chasing it, chasing, let's get, get in front of it. So now we're going to price it a little bit under the market so that we can go ahead on and get our offers that we're looking for. Cause we're just looking for one. We don't have to, at this point, we don't have to have 12. So if we sold a house in, in just one day, and one thing to your point, Brian, when I see agents that sold a house in one day, what are they doing with all those other offers? Are they now going to all the neighbors and said, hey, I sold a house in one day. Or are you going to the neighbors and saying, listen, we did sell this house in one day, but we had 10 offers. So I've got 10 people who are looking for a house that's very similar to this. Do you know anybody who's considering selling it? Any one of your neighbors, i.e. you? that's considering selling your home. So what are you doing with that? You're taking it and you're blasting it over Facebook and look at me and and then you're running off and chasing the next one when the next one might be two doors down. Yep, that's right. Okay, so there's some good questions in here. I wanna get some more of these questions. Um, and Sadeet asks, can I have your list of asset managers, please? And I'm going to go ahead and put a laughing, you know, a rolling on floor laughing on there because, uh, uh, no. <laughs> uh, and so, by the way, we do have, I will tell you this, that we do have uh, a program coming out through Club Wealth where we will be introducing you to some asset managers, but it's not going to be for everybody. It's going to be an exclusive group. Uh, and you're going to have to produce at a high enough level that, and, and, and you're, first of all, you're going to have to be a Club Wealth coaching client. Second of all, you're going to have to be at a certain tier in Club Wealth because I got to know when I introduce you to one of my asset managers or a hedge fund manager or any of these other guys that we're working with or people, sorry, it's not just guys, it's women too. In fact, the women get more, more done than the men. But the fact of the matter is- <coughs> Say it again. Right? Yeah, it's true, right? <laughs> but if, I'm gonna, if, if, if I or one of our other coaches, if we're going to introduce you to one of these people uh, that, that can light you up with 40, 50, 100 assignments, well, guess what? We're not going to risk our relationship with them by introducing them to a knucklehead. And I'm not saying you're a knucklehead, Cindy. That's not what I mean at all. What I, what I mean, though, is that we got to be very, very selective about who we introduce. And let me tell you something. This is a reciprocation game. You want to get introduced to people, you better be prepared to introduce other people. So you've got to start meeting the connectors and you got to start eating the, introducing the connectors to other connectors. Here's what's interesting. When Mike and I met, uh, and I was going to ask him the story he uh, had to go before I, I got a chance to ask him, but uh, to illustrate this point, we were we met at an REO conference, and, and a friend of ours, one of the uh, people that worked for me at the time, introduced us. Uh, well, the day we met, I walked into this room, and Mike was already in this room, and he had this group of asset managers and agents kind of around him, and he was kind of holding court, if you will, teaching them a bunch of stuff and having conversation with them, and they were all excited to have this conversation with them, and it was really great. And then all of a sudden, I walked in. And one of the people that was standing there talking to him walks over to me and then another and then another. And all of a sudden I started to, he calls it, he says, I stole his mojo. And uh, because essentially like that whole group of people ended up coming over to me. And why is that? Why? And it has nothing to do. It's not a criticism of Mike. Mike's a freaking rock star. 
but why did those guys migrate over me? Because I was the newest, most connected person in that realm, and they wanted to be connected with me because of the connections they knew I had. And that's the game you've got to learn to play. It's, it's really the difference between sales and business development. Business development is much more relationally based than sales. Uh, and this game we're about to get into, if you want to get institutional business, it is absolutely a, a relationship game. And if you're a Club Wealth member, I mean, understand that thing that we talk about in reference to world class, it, it, it falls down to your buyers, it goes to your sellers. If you're a team leader, it's, it's in how you treat your team also. And you take it and you keep growing with it. So because of Club Wealth, Michael, so because of, because of Club Wealth and, and the, uh, the club, some of the Club Wealth coaches, doors have opened up for me also that then leads to REO. And then from that one REO grows another REO. And then from those relationships that I make sure that if you're with me, it's world class, now hedge funds come along that now are developing in order to start feeding down to our expansion partners, you know, that we have. So it's, you have to treat them all the same, whether it's a buyer, whether it's a seller, whether it's the other agent on the other side. So we have some people who do, who are not nice to deal with. They aren't, they aren't nice to deal with at all. And I always say, why not? If you're going to dominate your market, then guess what? They're going to run, they're going to run across you again. If you are a team leader, then you should always, 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 always be world-class, no matter who it is. If they call you, if they call you, you are the nicest person in the deal. You don't give things away for your clients, but you're the nicest person in the deal because that person might become one of your listing agents or one of your buyer's agents. It's these little things in order, you know, for your business to grow is what I see so many agents who have smaller teams that are dropping the ball on. And the way I see this, I'll never work with you. Ah. You know, here's the thing, you guys, if, if you do it right, you collect the relationships and those relationships turn into other relationships and those relationships can now be shared with carefully selected agents that you're in contact with that are also well connected. But you guys, you got to be really careful with this. Um, it done wrong. All you do is you upset a lot of people and you won't get anywhere. You'll just be spinning your wheels. And by the way, this is not a cheap road to go down. Right. If you're serious about growing this part of your business, you're going to spend some money. You're going to get on airplanes. You're going to fly around the country. You're going to be at a lot of different events. You're going to be meeting a lot of people. You're going to be you're, you're going to be shaking a lot of hands and kissing a lot of babies, essentially. Right. And you're going to have to take some stuff from some people that know less than you. And, and by the way, there's some amazing asset managers out there that are wicked smart, that are awesome people that we love working with. There's also like in any industry, there's also a handful of these people that like, I don't want to deal with this guy or, you know, this guy's a knucklehead. He's a jerk, whatever. He treats me like I'm a low life. And here's the thing you've got to understand. Why is that? Because of who they're used to dealing with. They're used to dealing with agents that have no freaking clue. They're used to dealing with agents that don't do what they say, that don't get things done, that aren't professional, that don't know what they're doing. That And so what's happening is they're, they're wrapping us all into one bunch. And they're thinking that if, the, if that agent I just dealt with is like that, then you must be like that too. Real reality is that's not the case, but you have to show them differently. All right. So the, go ahead. One of the biggest things is what we're talking about right now is that your business needs to be diversified. If you're not getting anything else from this, diversify your business. Please do know your numbers, pay attention to it so that you're out in front of everything. Um, so know how many homes are doing a price decrease that day that you're going on an appointment for that listing appointment. Know these things, know what's going on in your market, stay in front of it. Um, and that way you can stay in front of that curve. So when it hits you, you're not like, whoa, where did that come from? If you don't know, then banks are now loosening things up. Yeah. They are, bank statement loans are, are here. We have a lender that does no doc. Oh my goodness, no doc, it's once back. again. It's back. It's you back. Don't I don't know why anyone thought it was going to go away. These companies made a ton of money. They made a ton of money off this. If you didn't think that it was going to come back, I don't know what's wrong with you, <laughs> but they made a ton of money off of this. <laughs> well, here's the thing. They, they say, and it's true, that those who do not learn from the past are condemned to repeat it. And let me tell you something. All that happens is these people, like these companies that go out of business, where do you think those people that work for that company, where do they go? Do you think they get into a different industry? I got news for you. They don't get into a different industry. They go to another company in the same industry. And now you've got the same people 
that are now just shifting. And so, yep. which is, which is great for you, right? Because you've established that relationship. And so, you know, you get to like, anytime an asset manager moves from company to company, you now not only have that relationship with that asset manager and all the people they knew at that other company, now they move to the new one, you get that relationship with that new company and you get the relationship with all the people that they knew at that new company uh, or that they find that they get to know there. So let me tell you, the moving around is actually really good, but you've got to understand that these companies as a company have not learned. They're going to do what they have to do to show their stockholders a profit, to show share prices are going up. That's what they're going to do. And if that means coming back out with no doc loans, if that comes means coming out with 125% loans again, I know as soon as I say that, Brian's probably going to freak out on me. But it, and I get it because it's, it's, it's scary to me too. But the reality is um, it is going to happen and, and it's already happening right now. So be prepared for it and make sure that, by the way, you should be at Business Strategy Mastermind Conference. Um, so there's two things I want to make sure you guys know about. One, we're going to be talking about this and we're going to have a, a, a specific uh, breakout at Business Strategy Mastermind Conference in November on this topic. You guys need to be there for that. Um, also, uh, so if you haven't signed up already, by the way, get your tickets now because Business Strategy Mastermind Conference is going to sell out. Um, so I'm putting a link in here now, w, let's see, clubwealth.com forward slash BSM. Uh, so make sure you get those tickets now because the prices are going to go up and they, it is going to sell out. The other thing you need to remember is right now, for those of you that have a team, right now is the team to be or to the time to be recruiting like crazy. You need to be growing your team. You need to be top grading your team. You need to be bringing on the best and brightest talent. You need to be bringing on the rock stars like Michelle Berquist out there who freaking crushes it. You need to find people that you can align yourself with that absolutely are going to share your values and that are going to work hard and that are serious about growing their business just like you are. Align yourself with those people now because as this turns on, what you're going to find, and Brian, I think you've gone, well, actually, you've, you've probably had less challenge with this because you've had so many people that were just attracted to your team by nature. But one of the biggest challenges I had was I had more leads coming in than I could handle. and I couldn't possibly hire agents fast enough to help handle those leads. And so that's what you got to guys got to get prepared for lead generation. It's turning a faucet on, on the wall. Go ahead. One other thing, Michael, is that what we're noticing in our recruiting is that people are coming down to the interviews with about four other teams they're looking at. Whereas yeah. before it was, Oh, this team thing, let me think about it. Uh, let me hear about it. They were more interested. They're showing up at the interviews prepared to compare the four different teams that they're considering. Whereas it didn't, we didn't have that before. And when I say before, I'm saying, let's just rewind it back three months. We didn't have that. So what are you doing to stay out in front? When it comes to everything, you know, it's these team, team leaders, you have to look at everything as a whole, not just this is the, what we're talking about with the market shift, not just the diversifying the part and, and for the buyers and for the sellers and for the institutionalized business, but also for your team. What are you doing for your team? Yeah. And, and here's the thing, you guys, you need to get recruiting aggressively on a consistent basis. Set this up on consistent. auto. Yeah. And that's why we love Wise Hire for this. I put the link in the chat here. Um, we love Wise Hire for this. But no matter what you do, you need to get recruiting on a consistent basis. And you need to automate as much. You're not going to be able to automate all of it. But you need to automate as much of the process of recruiting, hiring, training, and retaining the agents that you have as possible. And that's a lot to ask, right? But again, that's the kind of stuff, like when you come to Business Strategy Mastermind Conference, we'll be talking about that there. All right, Brian. It's a lot to ask, but as soon as you do it, then yeah. you can start focusing on everything else that makes your business, business, not just your team, your whole business so much better and so much more competitive to the next person's. That, well, yeah, that's right. And momentum, again, momentum creates momentum, right? When everybody's joining your team, everybody wants to know why. And that and it starts to feed on itself. It's like a snowball rolling downhill. All right, Brian, I got to hear. Brian, you've been so quiet today. I love, Brian's just, I, I, I love, I love how you just, you kind of, you sit there and I know that your wheels are turning and you're like, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Good. You can see it when his eyebrows move. He's like, hmm. I know, exactly. <laughs> so Brian, share your thoughts with us. We want to hear what you have to say. So first of all, like I, like I said, I'm going to keep saying this because I feel like people are going to overreact in the wrong direction. It's not 2007. It's not 2008. Is there a market shift? Yes. Was it? Re is it required? Yes. So the big difference between this shift and the last shift is the last shift, the last actual recession was caused by the real estate industry. And that's what people don't necessarily realize. It wasn't that we suffered like everybody else. We caused it. So there's 
I'm not saying that can't happen again because like, you know, we're talking about Dodd-Frank and other of these things, some of these restrictions, you know, anti-regulation stuff is happening in our country right now. And because of that, you are going to start to see no-doc loans and state bank statement loans and God only knows what other kind of creative crap they'll come up with this time. But nonetheless, what I really need people to hear is like, if you look at my market, REO and short sale combined currently is 0.1% of the inventory. 0.1, not 1%. 0.1. So you can't chase that and get caught up in that because you can spend, you know, with 30 assets available in my market, basically is what we've got. You can't spend hours and hours and hours chasing that. Doesn't mean you can't learn it and get ready for it, but you still have to sell the other stuff because 30 houses, that's a month. What are you going to do the other 11? So, you know, it's really important for people to understand that. And so what I mean by that is do all this stuff in a systematic way. If you don't have REO now, set aside an hour a week to start figuring out what that is, but don't set aside 25 hours a week to learn what it is. You know, if you don't have other lead sources, set those aside, but everything has to be done in a manner. Don't go from a person who has a one person on your team to spending 25 hours a week recruiting and now you got 20 people and now you don't know what to do with them. <laughs> you have, to have a system. And if you don't, you're going to get to learn a whole bunch. You'll, the education will be priceless, although you may not last. So, yeah. you know, do things in a way that makes sense. Follow up with your coach, come up with a, an organized way. And Michael, I'll say, don't forget to sell real estate. If you're someone who's your main, you know, income is you actually going and selling houses, do this other stuff, but you still got to go sell some houses so you can pay your bills. So. That's the biggest thing is that people will decide that as soon as I got a team and I have these people, woohoo, I'm out of production. No, darling. Sorry, darling. No, you're not. Because you just killed your number one team. You're a number one producer if you decided that you're back out of production all of a sudden. Yep. It doesn't work like that. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I love it. All right. We are out of time, you guys. I've got to jump on another webinar right now uh, that we're going to be going Facebook Live on. But uh, that being said, I want to thank all of you for being on. We've had, uh, dude, at any given time, we've had as many as 150 people uh watching today live at any given time that's a lot uh for all at one time and what you're going to see is this is going to get a lot of views uh again to brian's point understand yes the market is shifting yes more opportunities are coming currently in a lot of markets they're not here yet right currently in a lot of markets you might be at that 0.1 percent or whatever but here's what you have to understand you if you want to get ahead of the market you've got to be thinking ahead of the market so particularly for those of you that are in tiers three and higher I really want you guys to think about this. If you're in tier one and two right now, you need to remember to freaking sell real estate. Get out there and do the things that are working for you right now to bring in more business and get selling some real estate. Don't forget to get signed up for Business Strategy Mastermind Conference. Don't forget to check out Wise Hire. And regardless, you don't need to go add 25 people to your team right now, but you know what? You need to be adding people to your team on a consistent and regular basis, whether it's one, two, five, whatever. You need to be growing your team because it would be delusional to think that every single person on your team is going to be there forever. So Brian, Sheree, thank you guys so much. Appreciate you guys. Love you guys. Uh, and uh, Claire, the way you watch this from the beginning, there's two ways you can go, you can listen to it on the podcast. You can go to clubwealth.com forward slash TV, get the podcast. You can also uh, go to uh, clubwealth.com forward slash, I'm sorry, just go to facebook.com forward slash clubwealth. And the video will be available there shortly. Have an awesome time, everybody. Have a great week. And uh, again, thank you. Remember, you are world class inside you. There's a world class beast. beast just dying to get out. Do not go. let that beast out. <laughs> Take care. Bye, everybody. guys. Bye. Uh,